Welcome to the Employee Center Academy. We will be talking about migrating from service portal to employee center today. Before we get deep inside the session, I wanted to quickly introduce the speakers for today's session. So my name is Pooja Gupta. I'm a staff product manager with the employee experience team at ServiceNow. We are the team that builds employee center. And my co-host for today's session is Scott Campbell. Scott, you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Pooja. So yeah, my name is Scott Gamble and I'm a senior portfolio manager um, working within our ITSN team within our best practices organization. Thanks Scott. And we both are very excited to talk about this particular topic, which I know a lot of customers from ServiceNow are, are interested. Now, a little bit of housekeeping before we dive deep. We want to be able to answer a lot of your questions today. So to do that, please use the Q&A panel, uh, Q&A button on the panel today. We have panelists who will be monitoring that section and, and will be quick to responding to your questions. We have chat available for comments and feedback, but the questions will be monitored only from the Q&A channel, so please use that. And the, the slides from today's um, presentation and the video will be available for reference after this meeting. So please, please look out for that too. Now, what to expect? This is a very second session of the Employee Center Academy. So I wanna specify that these sessions are for you. These are actually time that product teams are taking out to ensure that you're getting a chance to ask us questions and interact with us as we do live builds and, and demos. So this is not just a presentation. We will actually have our instance open, a ServiceNow instance open, and we will walk you through different experiences on Employee Center. And especially today, we will be talking about the differences between Service Portal and Employee Center and, and what that migration path looks like. Um, and we will also be doing live builds. And these sessions are done monthly. This is our very second one, like I mentioned, and we will be back next month uh, on November 17. And the topic for that a preview is, um, is content experiences. Now, apart from these academy sessions, we have additional resources available for you. And I do want to call that out in the beginning of this session. So one is Employee Center Community Forum. We have a lot of content and guidance in terms of how to implement Employee Center, FAQs associated with it, and also the link to registering for these academy sessions and monitoring the previous ones are all available in the community forum. The, Q, the You also have the ability to ask questions directly on the community. And it is monitored not just by ServiceNow people, but also partners who are building continuously on Employee Center. So you will get your answers very quickly if you're on community. And then all the recordings that we do for the Academy session and additional that guidance that we are producing is actually going to be published on the YouTube. And we have a playlist dedicated to Employee Center on the Now Community channel for ServiceNow. An additional resource for you, which I want to highlight, is Now Create. Now, Now Create is, is, is our bank for leading practices, um, is our leading practice bank for implementation guidance to help you make the most of ServiceNow capabilities. And for Service for Employee Center, you will find five success paths that have in-depth in tools and templates that you can use to create the outcomes that you're looking for. Now Create is available on Customer Success Center on servicenow.com. So please go ahead and look at these resources as well. Now, let's talk about what you are here for and what, what we will be covering. So in today's session, we will be covering what is an employee center, a very quick snapshot of reminding you and, and everyone in, in the call today about what is employee center and, and why we have created it and what are the different options available with it. Then we will talk about how does Employee Center differ from Service Portal. We'll spend some time talking about the migration steps that customers would need to take as they are thinking about moving from Service Portal to Employee Center. And then we will do a live build where we will create an IT-only portal experience on Employee Center. So we have a rich agenda today and I'm, and I'm, hope, and I'm hoping you're all super excited about this. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Scott to cover the first three agenda items over here. Scott, over to you. Thanks very much, Pooja. Um, so I'm really excited to be here talking about one of the most 
exciting new capabilities launched this year uh, in Employee Centre. So for those of you who might be new to Employee Centre, I'm going to kick off by giving a brief overview of the Employee Centre portal and the features that it has. So Employee Centre is our new portal experience targeted towards employees. So Employee Centre is available to all ServiceNow customers and is included as part of your ServiceNow subscription, providing you're on the Rome release or later. Employee Centre is designed to provide a scalable solution for organisations by providing unified multi-department experience. So, for example, I can create individual Employee Centre portals for IT, HR, etc. The real power, however, is when departments are unified into a single employee portal. This is now possible out of the box with Employee Centre, designed from the ground up to offer a dynamic cross-organisation portal experience. Employee Centre is designed to scale with your needs and to join you on whatever stage of the journey that you're on. You might find one of the journey steps on this slide reflects your current situation. So, for example, you may be using multiple portals for different departments and are bringing these together into a static and outdated intranet that you currently use within your organisation. You may have lots of applications linked from your intranet or worst case, separately, that creates a lot of window surfing to get to the information that your employees need. Using Employee Centre can help to consolidate multiple department and application portals using the power of the now platform of platforms. So we can bring everything into a single view. Should you wish to integrate further, you can take advantage of the curated content, unified taxonomy and multimedia widgets to replace your intranet and make Employee Centre the destination site for all of your employees' needs. So I'd like to talk in a little bit more detail about the two flavours of Employee Centre. The standard Employee Centre experience, which is included in your subscription, provides out-of-the-box Employee Centre experiences and all you need to create unified, dynamic pages, provide connectivity to report to incidents, access the service catalogue and your knowledge bases, and benefit from new widgets such as the to-do section across multiple departments within your organisation. When your organisation is ready, you can seamlessly move on to the Employee Centre Pro product which is available as part of HR Pro or Enterprise or by individual subscription to level up to a full intranet or employee destination experience with cross-enterprise search, curated content, publication, and much more. The Employee Centre portal is one unified product accessed through two separate sort apps. So I want to talk a little bit about the technology behind Employee Centre. Employee Centre is built on the service portal platform capability. And it benefits from all of the existing functionality, including widgets, service portal designer, and more. Although in this session, we're talking about migrating from service portal, in the context of this session, we're referring to moving away from the legacy service portal over to the employee center portal. Both portals are available on now platform and are built upon the platform technology. So I'd like to cover off some of the product changes and how they compare to previous offerings. Employee Centre is built upon the Employee Service Centre product found in Quebec and previous releases of ServiceNow. As of Rome, two versions of the Employee Focus Portal are now available, Employee Centre and Employee Centre Pro. For new implementations of ServiceNow and for upgrades where an employee portal is being refreshed, Employee Centre is recommended as the standard offering. Service Portal will continue to be supported as of now. However, in the future, Service Portal will become a legacy application. If you'd like to know more about the differences between EC and EC Pro, please go ahead and check out the overview video published on YouTube as part of the Employee Centre playlist on the Now Community YouTube channel that Pooja mentioned earlier. So I'm going to highlight some of the key differences between Employee Centre and how it differs from Employee uh, from Service Portal. So this page goes into detail around the key differences between Service Portal and Employee Centre. I'm going to highlight some of the key pieces here. The Service Portal was designed as a base template with which organizations could build upon and develop. The core difference with Employee Center is that it's mostly configured and ready to go out of the box with widgets pre-installed and the portal itself has been designed and laid out for you with minimal configuration required to begin using it in your environment. Service portal pages are static and a lot of effort is required to design, create and maintain each page that's been created. Employee portal uses the power of the Now platform to dynamically create pages with relevant content types based on the unified taxonomy, reducing management effort across the life cycle. Employee Centre is designed from the ground up to scale up in line with your enterprise service management goals. Additional departments can be onboarded to the portal with minimal configuration. 
Content and search in Employee Centre is driven centrally, removing siloed departmental barriers and giving employees access to all the information they need in one experience. One of the most exciting features of Employee Centre is that it's designed to work natively with Now Mobile, creating a true omni-channel experience, which enables employees to stay connected to organisational information. We're going to be investing significantly in Employee Centre, and we're delivering new capabilities at least once a quarter to provide regular innovation and new features to enhance the experience. Before we proceed to, proceed to the ServiceNow instance and get hands-on with the difference between Service Portal and Employee Centre, I'd just like to talk a little bit about how different ServiceNow experiences can be used to suit different role types and use cases. One thing we're being asked a lot about in the best practice team is about how the wide selection of views and which to use for what use case. For example, there are a number of ways to access the knowledge base. You can do it through the UI. You can do it through the knowledge portal, whether that be via service portal or employee center or, or directly. And you can also access it via uh, search functionality. So this also applies to service catalog, but the approach will vary depending on your organizational needs. However, we do have a leading practice approach to get you started. Roles like catalog administrator, knowledge manager, configuration manager, et cetera, typically operate in a category centric manner. These roles understand the category or folder structure of the catalog they're managing. And they link this back to logical items such as departments, services, et cetera. The knowledge and service catalog taxonomies that exist within the UI make it easy for them to get to the items they wish to manage. So they're best using the UI, for example, the knowledge homepage within the UI. If they don't have access to the UI, if they're a contributor outside of IT, for example, then they can use the same structure through the knowledge portal. In service portal, the above category centric approach was also used as part of understanding how employee personas differ from those within specific administrative roles. Employee center focuses on how employees prefer to access information. Personas such as employees prefer to access catalog data more organically. They might not know which container or folder the knowledge or catalog item sits within. As a result, they're more likely to use the search function or benefit from AI recommendations to get access to what they need quickly. The Unified Taxonomy and Employee Center is a powerful way to augment this by curating information, resources, and data into an employee-centric view to assist with accessing information important to them. With all that information covered, let's dive into an instance and take a look at the service portal and employee center side by side. So within the service portal, items are siloed um, by content type. If we go into service portal, we can see at the top here that we've got knowledge, catalog, requests, et cetera. And all of these items leads to kind of a broken up browsing experience for the customer. When I go into employee center, I get a different experience. I can see multiple content types such as knowledge and service requests are organized into a topic centric view. So for example, if I go into the IT section and I click browse IT, it takes me to a topic view based on the IT department. And within there, I can have access to, I can see requests, I can see knowledge articles, I can see links to other pieces all within the context of this single view. That means that the mix is curated for me. I can find it in one location and it's related to the department or service I want to see. Using the power of the unified taxonomy, I can provide this service centric view to anyone accessing the portal and for any subjects I want to. So let's take a look at how links are managed within each system. So in service portal, I have the central icon based links at the top of the page. So I can configure these and add to them, but I don't get a lot of flexibility on where these are placed. We've completely changed the way things we've done um, within Employee Center. And quick links are richer with images supporting them. So for example, if I navigate down here into the homepage, you'll find a section of quick links here. I've got images which relate to the quick link, which help me to understand what it is visually. And I have full flexibility on where these are placed. So I can move this widget to any place I like on the homepage, place it on a different topic page, wherever I'd like to. Within Employee Center, the, the quick links are witcher. And because I'm allowed to able to move the widget around and change it, I get a lot more flexibility about how we offer links within the platform. We've also moved department specific references into the quick links area. So the flexibility around links doesn't just stop with quick links. 
I'm also able to configure links within the mega menu and get users to exactly what matters most. So this is an advantage over service portal, which is more restrictive on the amount of menu items you can show and how many clicks it takes to get to what you need. But our new dynamic mega menu within Employee Center really steps up this user experience and allows us to create a single one page view of all the different locations we want to go to within our employee intranet site or employee portal. We've also got additional flexibility for navigation. So we've got more than one area where you can add links. So you can add quick links to the home page or, or any topic pages. You can add quick links within sections within the mega menu. If you click into a particular topic type, you can add quick links within the page itself. So for example, on the IT homepage menu, I've got quick links here on the right hand side to things that matter most for my employees. I also have access to add things up at the top menu bar contextually for my user. So appointments, surveys, shopping cart, whatever I'd like to can be completely configured at this top level, at the mega menu level and for each page level also. So one of the most exciting new features of Employee Center is the new My Active Items widget. So this unifies all of the user's actions items into one area. So as I navigate around the service portal, I have to go to a number of places to find the information that I need as an approver or as a contributor. So I have to click into the knowledge base if I want to see knowledge articles that, are, that require my review. My approvals are in one section here, but I can see incidents and current requests in different places. And the experience is scattered um, and uh, not intuitive. In Employee Center, as soon as I visit the home page, I have a My Active Items widget that sits right at the top out of the box. I can see what tasks I've got to do, the requests that are open, and all of those great things. And when I click into the tasks, I get this great inbox style view that gives me a view of all the things I've got open, information around how it needs to be done, and I can be on top of my approvals, be on top of all the activities that I need to do as an employee. This is a real big step up and change in the experience and brings all of that content and information directly to the person that needs it. We've also got multiple options on how we communicate information. So within the traditional service portal that we have, we can have a current status widget, which is great. We can put all that kind of stuff on the homepage. We can do all that in Employee Center too, because we're harnessing the power of the Now platform and the service portal platform. So I can place a, a IT system status widget on my IT homepage. I can put it in a topic page. I can put that wherever I like to. Now, one of the key things with the portal, and one of the things we see most success with is when we look at deflection for things like major incidents. So we don't just have the option of, of using our system status widget. We've got other dynamic ways of updating and alerting people with announcements. So we can put a persistent message up right at the top of the employee center experience. You might have seen this if you're using service portal and developer instance, we're using this technology to um, guidepost people through to employee center. But you can see we've got flexible options as to what we do within the platform to notify users and ultimately deflect incidents and deflect requests when we need to. Something I want to touch on is the fact that we recommend that the central taxonomy with the unified taxonomy is the way to go. Employees get information curated for their benefit and information exactly how they need to see it, not by service or by ab abstract category, but by service topic or department. So the knowledge portal and the service catalog are both accessible through the employee center portal. So if your organization isn't quite ready to move to this dynamic unified taxonomy way of working, you can still move to Employee Center and use all of the benefits that you have from the traditional knowledge portal and service, port, uh, service request portal until you're ready. So for example, with my portal here, I've configured it so that I can go into IT and within the quick links section, I have quick access to the knowledge portal and also to the service catalog. I can see this at any time, I can direct people to this, but that's a couple of clicks. If I want to direct them directly to it through just clicking on the topic page within IT, I can do that by configuring it, uh, for configuring the items I want them to see here in the unified taxonomy. So moving on to the migration steps um, and taking you a little bit uh, high level through the journey that's required to move from service portal to employee center. And then after that, I'm gonna hand over to Pooja who's gonna get live in the instance and take a great look at how we can configure the portal to meet our needs. So the first thing that any customer will need to do is upgrade to Roam. That's a prerequisite for access to Employee Center. They can then go and install the latest Employee Center app from the ServiceNow store. 
and install the latest versions of all the department apps. The next step is to set up curated experiences. So clone the out-of-box taxonomy. It's best practice to take a copy of the taxonomy so that the out-of-box version is there for you should you wish to revert or benefit from changes in the future. Make the required changes to the clone taxonomy to meet the needs of your organization and then add all of that great content to the taxonomy. So catalog items, knowledge, quick links, other things like campaigns and videos on pro that you can add to augment that service centric experience. And then once you've done that work, associate the clone taxonomy to the EC portal so you're using the custom taxonomy that you've built. The next step is critically important. It's really important that you compare the existing experience you have on your service portal platform, identify what widgets and content are used, get feedback from your employees on what they like about it, what they don't like about it. From a technical perspective, you can also use the portal analyzer tool built within the platform to identify customizations and things that you might want to consider when you're moving to employee portal. But definitely focus some time on making sure that when you move to the experience, you've got a, a level or better experience than what you had before. Step four is really about just tying up some loose ends with the platform. We have a script available to help um, manage some of the permissions um, that will then give you a, a really kind of clear way of, of upgrading. Um, I've noticed in the chat a couple of mentions towards that kind of thing. Um, the script that's available in the ServiceNow store will help with those, um, those, those messages and things like that and, and help you move forward. Um, without having to worry about any custom changes. Step five is about making the required configurations to the menu, the footer, branding your page, giving it your color scheme, adding um, whatever um, information you want around the company, that kind of thing, and adding additional widgets as well. So anything additional that you want to use that you're bringing from, from your service portal implementation or new ideas, you can imp implement at this stage. Stage six depends on how you wanna launch and your communication strategy within your organization. There's a couple of ways you can do this. So you can choose to switch the URL, the suffix for your portal to SP so that there's a completely transparent experience. One day people are logging in on service portal, the next day they come in, they go to the same URL and they get the employee center experience. You might, however, choose this as an opportunity to change your suffix or brand it to something specific to your organization. Step seven, you might wanna use page route maps to redirect legacy custom pages to the appropriate pages or landing of page of the new portal if you need to. And then of course you can set up AI search if you wish to, but that doesn't have to be a prerequisite in order to go live with Employee Center. So with that in mind, I'm gonna take a quick stop to have a look at the Q and A um, and um, Pooja will join me to have a look at some of the questions. I can see Pooja's been busy answering questions already, but we're gonna go through a few here. So Pooja, I think you had one from Peter. Yeah, let me see which one. I have quite a few marked as we should answer live. Okay, so the one from Peter is that, uh, what is the guidance for customers who are currently on Quebec? And uh, um, as they plan to upgrade, are they required to plan to upgrade to Employee Center as well? Or can they plan to upgrade to Employee Center when they move to, uh, to San Diego version? So to be on Employee Center, you of course need to be on Rome. And you can, you always have that choice to, to you know, skip one release and, and actually implement Employee Center in San Diego. But I do wanna give it, I'd say that as a caveat because if you are choosing to do so, keep, keep a good track of what we are shipping with Employee Center because you don't want to recreate the experiences that we have already shipped out of box. So if you maintain your service portal uh, um, implementation, you wanna just make sure that um, you're not creating experiences that will be available on Employee Center. And then you can, of course, choose to migrate to Employee Center in San Diego. Great, thanks, Pooja, great advice. <clears throat> and Kano was asking, uh, is there Employee Center intended to replace specific customer or consumer service portals in CSM, or is it specific to ITSM? So Employee Center is actually an employee-facing portal. So we are working with all with, within ServiceNow to make sure it is actually a standard portal that we ship from ServiceNow for employee use cases. We will still have the customer service management portals, the CSM portal, but that's intended for external. And we are you know, working out whether we need to align uh, or how much we can align in terms of experiences. Um, but whenever you're thinking about an employee facing 
portal, one should think about Employee Center. And Employee Center is available for all customers. So it's not necessary an IT SM specific. You can actually have a multi-department um, um, experience built on Employee Center. So everything that you saw today is also all Employee Center standard. That's another question that someone was asking. So um, um, something that's available for all, employee posting portal and not specific to ITSM. That's great, Pooja. And um, I think it's really important to remember that with experiences like Employee Center, we're talking about persona-based applications for the first time. So we're not thinking about whether it's IT or HR or any other service delivery capability. This is about providing a great experience to the persona type of an employee. That's great, thank you. So um, I think uh, there was a couple of questions also coming through, uh, one from Julian about the access to the RCA script for any errors that come up. That's available in the store, right, Pooja? Yes, so we we actually shipped it a little later than September. So a couple of weeks back, we have posted a script on the service now store. So if you go on the listing for Employee Center, you can actually see in supporting documents, there is a script. And if you run that script, um, you will be able to resolve these RCA errors. Now you may have to run the script multiple times because what happens is as you are loading the page and you're loading different widgets in different pages, there are more scope requests that are created. So you'll have to resolve all of them to be able to solve for this. Right now it's a platform limitation that we are working with the platform team to resolve. And hopefully in a couple of releases by San Diego, we might not even have it. Thanks, Pooja. That's great. We're getting loads of great questions coming in, which I will do my best to continue to answer as we go through. Um, but I think uh, time to hand over to you for the live build experience. Yes, absolutely. Um, and um, um, I'm super excited to do this. Now what we will do is we will actually look into an out of box portal uh, for Employee Center. And I'm going to use um, uh, what we call as uh, just the IT experience. So let me just grab screen from Scott, and we will try to configure it um, to create something that will work for your organization. And what I'll do is I'll walk you through different options that are available. So what you see on the screen right now is the out of box IT only um, taxonomy enabled on Employee Center. Now the IT taxonomy is shipped as part of the Employee Center app. So you don't need to download anything separately to get the IT taxonomy. Everything else, the widgets and all, all the other experiences that are built on the portal are, are still available. And this is the Employee Center standard. So this is something that is available for everyone. And if you see on top here, this is the out of box taxonomy and you can see it's a mega menu. You can see um, IT is the, is the parent topic. And uh, then you have hardware, software, network. Um, and, and then with those, we have additional subtopics. Now in this mega menu, you would see a quick links associated with this mega menu. This is a feature that we have shipped in November. So what you see right now on the screen is the latest version, which we are, which is not even launched yet because it's launching tomorrow. So um, this is a quick, uh, quick uh, preview of what that looks like. Now, if you remember the migration steps that Scott was showing, the first thing that we recommend you to do right after installing Employee Center is to create your curated experiences. And creating the curated experiences means updating this taxonomy that you see over here um, and, and creating a taxonomy that works for you. If you were at our last month's Academy session, we actually covered in depth, how do you create a taxonomy, how you associate uh, different content types to a taxonomy, um, and uh, how do you associate that new taxonomy that you have created to Employee Center to actually create the whole, the whole experience that you're looking for. So I won't go deep into that piece um, yet, and uh, we will post that link if you don't have it on chat um, so that you have easy access to it. But what I'll do is I'll go and look into, um, I'll just showcase something that we have created um, to demonstrate what an IT specific taxonomy can look out of box. Now, we like, before I get into that, I do wanna call that, what you see right now is completely out of box. And we do recommend you to stay out of box as much as you can, 
But at the same time, the things that we will walk through in terms of taxonomy, adding new, like changing a few things in terms of the widgets, those are some things that are recommended to make this portal more friendly for your audience and, and more um, intuitive for your audience. So um, feel free to think about these changes as you are um, um, navigating and creating a portal for your organization. Now, content taxonomies. Now, if you go on the content taxonomy module, you can see that I have created um, employee and there is another one, IT taxonomy. The way I created this is essentially by cloning this out of box taxonomy, which is employee. And what I did was once I cloned it, I renamed it. And then for each of these subtopics, so over here you see IT has hardware, software. I went into hardware and then removed the parent topic associated with it. Once you do that, this topic essentially comes a level up. So it gets associated at the IT level instead of being uh, associated as a sub subtopic level. So if you, I did that for all of the, um, all of the other topics within IT and then I deactivated IT. So now if I go ahead and associate employee center with this taxonomy, So bear with me while I do this. Now, I don't wanna fall out here. You can only do this one step at a time. So right now, the first step I did was to de-link the out of box taxonomy. The next step, I'm going to link the new taxonomy. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the content taxonomy module and deactivate the out of box taxonomy. This is important to do because it kind of messes up with uh, some of the configurations on the portal page if you have like multiple taxonomies active at the same time. So let's just go ahead and deactivate this and update. Now, if you go and refresh ESC, you will be able to see um, the new taxonomy applied on the portal. Now, I did not spend too much time in actually creating this taxonomy. So you would see that I do not have like subtopics associated with it, but when you are creating your own, own taxonomy, you would want to think about that because it creates a little bit more nicer view of what you're doing. It makes content discovery a lot easier. For example, under computers, you may wanna have laptops, desktops, or you may have like, want to have like Mac versus um, um, uh, Windows, uh, things like that. So as like a three tier topic structure is typically what we recommend. And then these titles here are essentially what was out of box and I kind of just simply use those. You may want to think through like, what are these different titles that you may have? Um, if you have categories and knowledge base, that's, that if that, that is something you want to retain, you can choose to do that. And then I didn't also did not showcase um, actually tagging content because I'm just using demo data, which is already tagged. But that's something that you will also have to invest and in, make sure you have the right content tagged at each of these levels. Specifically, what you want to look at, especially if you're on the November release of the store apps, is the quick links associated with this. I think this is a really powerful feature to highlight um, some of the external pages, it could be like a, um, an external page or specific pages like system status, which you may want to highlight un under these topics. So um, definitely a space where you should spend time. Now, before I go further, I do want to highlight one more thing. Um, so you would see that on the same instance, I also have the service portal enabled. So essentially, when you're moving from service portal to employee center, it's not that you download employee center and your service portal implementation gets messed up. These are two separate portals. So you can actually have them active at the same time. So the service portal application over here is already active. And the notifications that you see on top is essentially a notification that only admins will be able to see. And I'm logged in as a system administrator on this portal. 
And this is important because this is the nudge that we are giving you all our customers to, to make sure they are aware of the latest uh, technology, the latest uh, features that we are launching with Employee Center. Now, once you are done with the taxonomy, your next step is thinking about what experiences you want to enable. To give you an example, um, there is out of box, we have placed system status um, as part of the quick links. Maybe you want to highlight system status. So system status is essentially the widget that, I mean, it's, it's a link, it's a page that gives you access to um, things like current status, plant maintenance, and you can actually build this page further to include additional widgets uh, associated with your um, service state um, and, and system status. So um, out of box, we have it placed as part of quick links, but let's say you want to make this appear as part of the menu over here, you should be able to do that. So once you're done with the taxonomy, your next conversation is what you want to, apart from the taxonomy, what links you want to make available on, on the menu. So let me show you, let, let's say you wanted to have the system status available, how you can do that. So you would go on employee center, you go on portal configurations, and then there is this main menu, employee center menu, which you can go and update. Now here, um, I'll talk about the more menu separately, but let's just go click edit and then hold on where did my option go to actually let's see where did my more menu hold on there you go okay so let's say system status, and you can search for the system status page. Service status, and then submit. So you can see this has been added over here. And when we go to employee center portal, you will see it appear over here. So it's a pretty simple way to actually just add any, any any link to a page, you can also have like knowledge base, catalog um, pages appear over here if that is something that you still want to make sure your employees have easy access to. Um, so think about what you want to put in your uh, main mega menu alongside your main mega menu on your portal. The next place that you want to think about is essentially this more. Now what happens is, um, out of box, we have my task and my request available on top, but you also have this ability to add like a more icon over here, which can increase the number of things that you actually have quick links or quick access uh, for the employee, things like my surveys, my cart, um, and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So once you go on the, it's, it's the same employee center menu, and you see this more icon, the more menu item, if you go in here, you can actually configure new more menu items. Um, and I'm going to show you. So my God, and let's say we put the one submit. So if you just have one, it nicely appears as an additional thing added over here, which is my cart. And I know like, you know, a lot of our customers are actually using the add to cart functionality associated with catalog. Now this is a direct link to that, which is pretty handy. Now, let's say you wanna add more things and I'm not gonna add a link to it, but let's just say you wanna add um, surveys. Um, or, um, and then you have, um, I'm just gonna add a dummy link over here, um, but let's just say this, um, submit. And then you would see that this gets cascaded under a more icon. And 
people have access, employees will have access to all of these over here. So essentially you're thinking about your taxonomy, then you're thinking about what you want um, to, to appear in, in your menu over here, then you're thinking about what you want to appear in the more, uh, more, more menu on top. Now, as you're thinking about more, and as you're thinking about the main menu, the main differences that you have to think is, uh, the more menu over here is essentially, which is directly associated with the employee. So it's like my task, my request, my surveys, my cart, whereas, the things on this main menu is something that is more generic. So things like my org chart, like org chart, system status, um, it could even be like knowledge base if you want it to be, or, or let's say you have, um, let's say you're choosing the path of like, you know, having an old view available or, uh, or some, some other portal that you want to be available on employee center and easy access to it, you can put that over here. Um, so think about how these, the menu item in employee center is created is functioning and the role it's playing for your organization. And then the last piece in terms of creating the experience is the widgets. Now, I'm not gonna go in depth of that, but essentially you can use the service portal designer to move any of these widgets around. Let's say you wanna have quick links appear before the popular topics. Um, you can choose to do that. And you have this space over here, you can use this space to add any of the 200 plus widgets that are shipped with the service portal platform. So I wanna emphasize that because Employee Center is built on the service portal platform, you have all the functionality that was available with service portal also available with Employee Center. All we have done is we have created a really nice looking portal for you. So you don't have to create that portal for yourself. And we have shipped a bunch of awesome tech, uh, features like the taxonomy and, and um, uh, the curated experiences, which helps finding and discovering content a lot easier. Now, the last thing I'll showcase um, before we pause again for questions is um, the URL changes. So if you go to portals, You can see all the different portals that are actually available as part of um, out of box. And these, all of these are built on the service portal platform. And you can see the URLs associated with it. Now let's say service portal is your active, um, active portal currently. So all, all employees um, are using this portal um, and you are ready to shift to employee center. So what you would do is you would rename, um, let's just, do that live over here. You would rename your old portal. Let's say, I just want to say old, um, updated. And whatever was your original URL associated with the portal, you will actually just go ahead and rename Employee Center with that, um, with that URL suffix. So I'm just going to call it SP, just for demonstration sake. So essentially, now this will need to be SP and it will load our new employee center. So from an end user perspective, there will be no impact uh, in terms of remembering new URLs or bookmarking new URLs. It's the same URL that will be used to access employee center versus service portal. Now you may choose to keep the URL separate in the beginning and you know provide like um, um, like a link to the new employee center on service portal as you're thinking about migrating, get a little bit of feedback and then move into employee center. There are all these different options that are available to you. The point that I'm making is that you don't have to have end user impact in terms of remembering new links if you choose not to. All right, this was the end of the live demo that I wanted to do. Um, let's pause for questions. Thanks, Pooja. Great demo as always. Um, really great to see um, all of the great capability of the platform and I really hope that's helped everybody um, understand how you can migrate. And um, we've got loads of questions. I've been trying to uh, beaver away answering them, but I haven't got to them all. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on is an answer I gave to Satish. Uh, thanks for the question. I mentioned around how the first thing that comes to mind uh, when we say employees, employee centre, um, is HR. Um, is ServiceNow thinking on changing Employee Center to be a more enterprise portal targeted to a whole organization? Now, I did answer that question, but I just want to expand a bit on that. So Employee Center is all about the employee persona. 
So whether they're trying to access HR information, IT information, other departments that provide service delivery within your organization, it doesn't matter. The, the employee center portal is designed to target that employee persona. So it really is an enterprise scale portal designed to help you with any of those employee based persona queries. So you can consider this to be the enterprise portal for the employee persona. So um, let's touch through some of the questions that are in the uh, Q&A and then we hopefully will have some time left over for live questions. So um, Luis asked, will ServiceNow share a roadmap for the upcoming features? Pooja? Um, we, we continuously have conversations um, with our customers on, on upcoming features and roadmap. Um, but we don't publicly share it um, on, um, on any channel. The best way to know about upcoming features is to be completely active on employee center community page. That's where we will be posting articles and, and giving you ideas around what is upcoming. Hope that helps. Great, thanks Pooja. And Anmol was asking, are quick links AI based dynamically or are they manually created? Yeah, they are manually created. Um, these are more, um, more like you know something that we are providing as a nice fancy view of provide replacing the icon view that we had for service portal. Um, um, so these are right now not AI based. The AI based functionality is recommended for you. So that's that's essentially if you are an HRST Pro customer, you will have the recommended for you widget, the the articles and the the, the content that's posted over there, ML driven. Um, and this functionality will be available to ITSM Pro customers also shortly. So I, I expect by mid next year, it will be available for ITSM Pro customers as well. That's great news, Pooja. And, and Krista asks, if customers upgrade to Roam, are they required to take on EC or um, is it OK for them to continue using ESC if they're using it? So if, if a customer is on ESC, which is the Employee Service Center, then they automatically get upgraded to Employee Center Pro. Everything that you saw today, again, was Employee Center, not Employee Center Pro. Um, and a customer who's on ESC automatically gets, it's an upgrade for them to Employee Center Pro. So let's say they don't download the new apps, they will still see the name change from Employee Service Center to Employee Center Pro. And once they download the store apps, they will have the option to adopt all the functionalities that has been shipped to them. That's great. So um, Luis was asking about topic pages and he asked that um, if you're adding service portal widgets or any service portal platform widgets to a topic, it will display those widgets in all the topic pages. Is there a way to choose what topic pages display specific widgets? Not at the moment, but this is something that is in our roadmap um, and we will. So right now what happens is uh, you have a single template to control all the topic pages. So if you update the template, it gets applied to all the topic pages. The good news is if you don't have content associated with the widget for a, let's say a particular topic, then that widget does not show up on that topic, topic page. For example, if you have, um, let's say quick links added in the template and you would see that added out of box. But uh, let's say you have quick links for hardware, but you don't have quick links for software, then you won't see the quick links widget appear for software. So the best way to control right now is um, to not have content associated with the widget for a particular topic. But in our roadmap, we are actually going to ship multiple templates uh, that you could apply for a topic page. Uh, so you will have more flexibility going forward. Great. Uh, Ernest was asking that um, he had a question around um, quick links. So um, when placing order guides within quick links, um, he ran into an issue where the next page button wasn't available to move to an option selection. Is this something that's on our roadmap to fix? Um, I've not tested this use case, but I will definitely share this back with the product team. And uh, um, if this is an issue, we will definitely fix it. That's I would good. suggest raising a, a support request for this. Great, thank you. Mark is asking if there's any plans to expand the My Request widget, so the, the, the Tasks widget, um, for example, so you can filter on the type or all the records that are in there. 
um not at the moment we are investing more on the my active items widget and that's the place where you know we're try trying to provide more flexibility and we are um looking for ways and engaging employees on that my active items widget and having more functionalities the my request which is on top is something that uh, um um uh, is a little bit of lower priority for us um at the moment great Shannon's asking how do updates work um, because he sees from the store how do they know when an update is available and um, because they're used to processing skipped updates how are things like that handled if you update directly from the store so um, with store we will be actually releasing every quarter and uh, we do have marketing and like associated and communication associated with every release but again i think the best way to stay informed is to be on employee center community because we will be posting um uh new like we'll be having uh, news and like uh, articles posted whenever we have a new release and uh, um in terms of um, store releases it's the same as how you would have for any any other um any other when you're uploading from rome to to like san diego all of these things are handled in the same way as you would upgrade from um one family release to the other great so we had an anonymous attendee ask a question around um separation of information between hr and it he says he or she says that our organization is very strict about separation between hr and it portals what's the best practice to utilize employee center without a unified portal model should we create separate clones of employee center with unique urls then develop separately so I think one of the key things is is to make sure you're asking the questions why if there's a specific regulatory reason fair enough but it's really important to look at how your enterprise service delivery model can be used across departments that's when the real benefit of things like employee center come in however if you want to benefit from all of the technology advancements and all of the great new stuff that we've got from employee center there's nothing stopping you creating multiple versions of the employee center instance separate taxonomies for each one and separate separate suffixes you can access separately i i totally agree scott um and and i want to add one more thing uh, we've often heard organizations who are asking for something like this is probably because of ownership between hr and it because they both these departments want to retain ownership and that is something that we are looking into you know providing a little bit more flexibility on uh, employee center so in our roadmap we have um, we're looking into how we can provide um, we can like you know allow hr to own its own pages and it to own its own pages without you know having um, having like a central owner for both um, if that is the reason why then that's something that we are looking into um, but uh, before you start go down the path of creating multiple portals you should really ask why from an employee perspective multiple portals is not a good experience a unified portal is what an employee is looking for absolutely really critical um that those questions are asked to make sure you can make the most of the platform uh, so we had a question around um the technology behind employee center and um whether or not it's built on angular js um uh, and is it compatible with ui builder so the employee center platform is the same platform that you use for service portal so yes the platform is built on angular js um it's configurable using our service portal designer application so if you want to make changes to it you can do it in that application um tusha was asking um if we want to add some widgets to the employee center home page what's the best practice for that uh should we make changes in the out of the box page or should we clone it um no you don't need to clone it you can make it to that but what we recommend is to actually make those changes in your own scoped app um and that just makes it easy for you to you know control the changes um um and um, um what else and then in terms of best practices um just think about the intent like you know when i was talking about the mega menu and like more think about the intent behind each of these widgets as you are placing on the home page um with employee center you have topic pages as well um so think about what you want to place on home page versus topic pages those are different things that you want to think about as you are adding widgets on the home page thanks pooja 
So uh, we're coming to the top of the hour now. We've still got lots of great questions um, and I'd love to answer them all right now. But um, as we're coming to the top of the hour, I think we'll have to take some of these away and um, come back to you. Um, Pooja, over to you for any other business. Um, no, this was really helpful. I do have someone raise hand and I don't mind having someone um, um, ask a live question. Do we want to do that? Yep, go ahead. Uh, Amol was it, uh, is asking a question. So, yep. Go ahead. Hi, Pooja. Hi, Scott. Uh, thank you for arranging this session. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Great. Hi, Anmol. Hi. So just wanted to know, like, although uh, I'm assuming this feature would be available as by default, but still out of curiosity, I was just because I haven't gone through the release notes. So just wanted to know, like, every enterprise do have different kind of employees available like contract, um, subcontract and permanent employees. And do we have that capability in uh, employee center to control the HR related content for respective users if they are not designed by the rules or something else? So all the content that you have over here actually has user criteria. So you can use user criteria to ensure what content is visible for whom. Okay, so basically again, basic back to basic platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool, thanks, thanks. Thanks so, Anmol. Yep. All right, um, this was a great session. Thank you everyone for attending. And uh, uh, I just wanna uh, like remind that this session will be recorded and posted in case you have, um, if you wanna revisit anything that we um, uh, covered today. And for any unanswered question, we will get back to you with, um, with answers. Thank you so much.